Hello everyone, I'm Kirsten Duggleby with Pool and Grain. Today we are going to discuss the poultry digestive tract. As many know, chickens digest their food in a completely different way than mammals, and understanding their system will help us understand why we implement different management practices, why we feed what we feed, and allow us to recognize when something is irregular. The beak is where the process begins. There are no teeth or jaw muscles. Saliva is secreted at the root of the beak through the salivary glands, which moisten and lubricate the food. Remember that chickens do not chew their food like a human would. Instead, they swallow it whole. Chickens do have around 300 taste buds compared to humans that have around 2,000, but they're located towards the back of the beak, so they've already committed to eating their food at that point and don't really have the luxury of picking or choosing their meal based on taste testing. Instead, they're more visually oriented and are attracted to the color, size, and shape of their food. The tongue, which is covered in barbs, brushes the food towards the lungereal mound, which helps move the food back to the esophagus. The esophagus is made up of four different layers, the mucosal, the submucosal, muscle tunic, and serosal. The mucosal layer is lined with tissue, which contains mucus glands hence the name, which aid in carrying the food toward the crop, which is triggered by the enteric nervous system, the brain of the GI tract. The crop acts as a bin or a pouch for the food, which expands and can hold up to 1.5 ounces of matter. That's just under the weight of a golf ball. Within the crop, very little digestion occurs. Feed will combine with water and some good bacteria to soften the food particles before moving through the system. The feed in the crop will be released to the digestive tract throughout the day as the proventriculus collapse. The proventriculus, which is similar to the human stomach, combines stomach acid along with pepsin, a digestive enzyme, to start the breakdown of feed into smaller pieces. But it quickly passes through this and moves to the gizzard. The gizzard is the second stomach, which is a muscle meant for grinding food particles what our teeth are partially responsible for. The strong muscle works together with stone matter or grit to crush remaining fibrous material. It's not necessary to supply grit to a chick because their food is already ground up and made into a pellet or crumble. Grit is really necessary for the birds that start to eat grass and other bugs um, and things that are not already ground up into small pieces. Most nutrients, such as protein, fats, and carbohydrates, are then absorbed through the small intestine, which measure in an adult bird around 4.5 feet in length. The pancreas, similar to the human, secretes juices that control the glycogen and insulin levels. Bile, produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder, help break down fat. Water and the remaining undigested food is absorbed in the large intestine. The cica, plural for cecum, are a pair of tubes that allow fermentation of undigested food to take place. And lastly, the remaining feces and urine, the white matter that you see, pass through the vent together with eggs from the oviduct. 